Hello, my name is Oliver Zay, and this is my presentation of my Honors Capstone project. Uh, I got involved in this project through the MDP program. Uh, this is a FEAST project, which is a combination of engineering and arts. And I worked on this project with my partners, JQ, Eilish, and Eloisa. And our uh, faculty advisor was Professor Stephen Rush. The motivations behind this project, um, it's called the sonification of sleep data. And the problem that we were trying to address is that when uh, people are suspected of having sleep apnea or apopnea, which are conditions that affect their breathing while they're asleep, they go in and get sleep studies done. And these collect a lot of data about what's going on while a person's sleeping. Um, they'll collect data about their oxygen rate, um, their nasal pressure, their heart rate, sometimes a signal attached to their torso to see if they're moving while they're asleep, and also potentially even a signal on if they're snoring. And this collects a lot of data, and doctors will have to go through this oftentimes by hand um, to determine and diagnose if a person is experiencing sleep apnea or, or hypopnea events. And so the goal of this project was to create sort of an assistive diagnostic tool um, that would be easy to use, uh, very intuitive, and also fun to use for the doctors that are scoring these sleep studies. And so I'll walk you through what we did to achieve this. So like I said, sleep apnea and hypopnea are conditions that affect a person's breathing while they're asleep. Sleep apnea is defined as a complete blockage of breathing during a person's sleep. Um, for purposes of this project, uh, we use the definition of a 95% or greater decrease in nasal pressure. And hypopneas are sort of the light version of sleep apnea. Um, they're just a period of shallow breathing. And we define this as a 4% or greater decrease in oxygen saturation. And these are the definitions that doctors will use while scoring sleep studies. Another reason why a diagnostic tool such as the one we created um, is useful is because sleep apnea and hypopnea, um, they can be difficult to identify. A lot of the times patients will only go in for sleep studies if they experience symptoms that persist into their waking lives because these are conditions that happen while people are asleep. And so it is, it's crucial that sleep studies are scored and analyzed correctly and accurately so that people can begin uh, whatever treatment regimens they need to for their specific condition. So um, to achieve the goal of the project, the technique that we used was sonifying the data, as in taking the sleep study data and turning it to electronic music that changes based on the detection of sleep apnea and hypopnea events. One of sort of the motivating definitions um, that caused that link is that when doctors are scoring sleep studies, they refer to the decreases in oxygenation and nasal pressure as drops. And drops also exist in electronic music. And so there's sort of an intuitive sensory link uh, between the two events occurring. And you'll hear that later on when I show off the results of our project. So how sort of the flow of our data worked is that we took the sleep study data and ran it through a real-time detection algorithm uh, that we coded in Python. Um, how we achieved this is we calculated a respiratory baseline um, based off of the nasal pressure and oxygen signals. Um, we used a bandpass filter to remove some of the high and low frequency noise that was present in the data and then calculated a moving average curve uh, with a four second window, which is the length of the average respiration uh, to obtain the respiratory baseline, which you can see in the graph of the center of the poster. And then we identified the uh, sleep apnea and hypopnea events uh, based off of the previous definitions I gave. Um, on the detection of sleep apnea or hypopnea events, we took that data from Python and sent it to Max uh, via UDP signal. Um, and then the signal was processed in Max and then sent to Ableton Live, which we used as sort of just a, a trigger or a controller on the electronic music uh, that we made. And so that is how we took the, the sleep study data and then pipelined it all the way to the music that we created so that it changes based on the detection of sleep apnea and hypopnea um, in a patient's sleep study data.
So um, now I'm going to show off our results to you in sort of the form of a virtual reality music video. Um, the visual part is a really cool uh, virtual reality space um, based off of Eilish's own uh, sleep study that she had done on her. Um, she has narcolepsy. And so she took her own, it's called sleep architecture, and then she made it into its own virtual reality space so that you can sort of walk around and, and visualize her own sleep data, um, which theoretically could be done for any patient that would have a, a sleep study performed on them. So that's the really cool visual that you're gonna see. But more importantly is the sound, um, which uh, what you should be listening for is there will be a, a frequency filter on the music whenever a, a hypopnea is detected in the sleep data. Um, which will just sort, sort of sound like all the high frequencies of the music will cut down and it'll just be the, the lower frequencies. Um, and then if there's a sleep apnea detected, which there is in this data for purposes of showing off, um, you'll hear a beat repeater effect where it'll just sort of chop the beat, um, both of which will be a lot more obvious when you're listening to the music. So um, I'm gonna cut this into the video right now so that you can uh, listen to the music and look at the the super cool virtual reality space and then i'll come back and talk to you after So hopefully from that little clip, um, you can sort of understand how the music creates an intuitive sensory link between uh, what's going on in the patient's sleep data and what's going on in the music. And our hope is that uh, this could be used as a diagnostic tool for a doctor to just pop on headphones and then listen to someone's sleep study um, and be able to make an accurate diagnosis based off of what they hear rather than having to go through the data by hand. Um, it's also uh, in real time, so it could be uh, used as a sleep study was going on, or it could be referenced uh, after the sleep study and they would know what's going on with a patient in real time. So uh, our work on this project will be continuing past this semester. Uh, we have a, a team of doctors uh, with one head contact that we have a relationship with at Mayo Clinic uh, in Minnesota. And our plan is to hopefully go to Mayo Clinic and present uh, 
our project to them sometime in September of this year. Uh, but for now, sort of the things that we're looking at working on in the future is trying to obtain more data and improve the existing music that we already have and our ability to, to tweak it um, and using different signals that exist within sleep studies to sort of beef up our detection of sleep apnea and hypopnea. Um, another thing that we're looking into is there are two different types of apneas and hypopneas, um, central and obstructive. Obstructive means that there's something like physically obstructing you from breathing and central is, uh, it's based on your brain and your nervous system preventing you from breathing. Um, and so we're looking into getting data sets where it's confirmed that the patient had either central or obstructive uh, apnea or hypopnea, and then working on seeing if we can make the music change in different ways based on the, det uh, the detection of either one of those and working on uh, making that accurate. Um, I'm the computer scientist of the group, and so I'm also looking into potentially uh, doing some machine learning classification uh, methods on, on the sleep data and seeing what we can gain in terms of uh, accurately detecting apneas and hypopneas based off of that. Um, but that's the project. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment those. Uh, you can check out our website if you want to scan the QR code um, that's at the bottom of the poster. And thank you all so much for listening.